Hey everybody, welcome back to the brand new video. Today we have the Topps Future Star Club subscription boxes. We've got four of them to do today. This is a subscription service that Topps puts together and uh, I think it's currently sold out, but every now and then spots may open up. Last month, if you recall, we have a video and I can link that down in the description if you'd like to check that out. But last month they featured a Heritage Blaster Box along with a notepad uh, which is actually pretty cool. Gave those uh, to the kiddos to sketch in or write down notes or whatever, you know, like a little mini diary. And they also have a little five card special edition set in each one. Now, this month, I'm not sure what we're going to have. Um, after re watching the video from last month that I did, they were calling for big league this month or in their next box, which they're a couple of months behind, by the way. The one that, one that we did last month. Um, in June, I think the beginning of June or late May was actually for April. I think this box might be for May, but, uh, we'll see what blasters in here. We'll see what the special item is. And also we'll see what the special limited edition set is this month. So it's likely going to be the same content in each and every box. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate that. Everybody hope everybody's having a great Friday. I hope that you will check us out a little bit later tonight. We'll be giving away some cards in appreciation of the 95,000 subscriber mark that we just hit uh, two days ago. So that'll be a live stream. All you have to do to uh, participate in that is just simply watch it, be subscribed to the channel, uh, and then leave a comment on the uh, 95K giveaway from last Sunday. That's coming up later tonight, probably around like 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, let's go ahead and see what we got here. By the way, we've got Saturday Showdown coming up as well tomorrow and uh sunday it looks like world's greatest card chase returns remember those boxes from back in the day well they are back and it looks like they're worse than ever at least that's what it looks like well i cannot wait to open these up i hope they're better than they were but let's go ahead and get started here Toma, uh, thomas has the first box and thomas is a patreon member if you'd like to participate in any of our case breaks or video sponsorships like this one Check us out on Patreon. There's a link down in the description there. You can support us there. And higher tiers get monthly packs or boxes sent. All right. So it looks like this month we have a pen. I actually really like this pen. That's pretty cool right there. Uh, Tomas, you're going to get the pen, but uh, uh, that's pretty cool. Spread words, not germs. Sanitizer and pen combo. Sanitizer refillable, easy to refill. That's uh, kind of cool right there. How does this work? I guess you take this cap off and uh, <laughs> it looks like it has a little spray action thing there. I wonder if you could put something else in here. Maybe uh, I could see like back in the day as a kid, you might want to uh, put some water in there or something from the water fountain. There's the pen. So pretty cool little... Uh, bonus item right there. I like that. There's also an, a limited edition set. You can see the uh, there's five cards there. Frank Thomas is on the back. Willie Mays is on the front. Kind of has a, like a 1980 tops type feel to it. That's pretty awesome. And then the featured blaster this month looks to be Stadium Club. And that's all that we've got in the box right there. So, Thomas, you're up first. Let's see what we can find for you. We'll start by uh, opening up your blaster box then we'll check out the five cards in your set i guess i can throw this back in your box there all right so here we go stadium club i'd like to find an autograph in here i don't know if we will chances of finding one are roughly one in every 18 or so boxes i think that's what the odds say if you if you're not sure you can pause that and double check it for yourself but here we go thomas there's that box topper. Looks like you've got yourself a Cal Ripken Jr. Pretty cool. All right, so five cards per pack, eight packs, 40 total cards. we got Shogo Akiyama leading things off. Key Brian Hayes, one of the top rookies from this class. Needs to get that batting average up just a tad. It's in like 269, which isn't bad, but I'd like to see that up around the 300 mark. Ty Cobb, he was hitting 300 for, you know, the first... Uh, month of the season or at least his first month of the season since he missed a lot of time with that wrist injury it's dropped off a little bit there's Zach Granke who by the way is a future hall of famer if you haven't picked up your Zach Granke rookie cards yet what are you waiting for Mookie Betts 
Red Foil and Chris Panic is the last one there for Tomas. I don't want to say Tomas all the time. Thomas. Next up, we've got the Field of Dreams car. That's what I call this one. Max Kepler going into the Ivy there. That's a movie that I have to watch. I haven't seen uh, Field of Dreams in a long time. That's one that I needed to bring back out. Um, I don't own it, but maybe at a flea market I could run across it for a buck or something like that. There's a bunch of baseball movies that I want to buy for a dollar to show the family that they've never seen before. I was thinking about Field of Dreams and The Natural and uh, Major League 1 and 2, which might not be kid-appropriate yet. Um, what else? The Perfect Game with Kevin, Kevin Costner in there. There's Jazz Chisholm. That's a nice one right there. That's a red one. So I'm going to try to maybe find those for a dollar or two at the flea markets. Hopefully we can start to get out to flea markets again. I haven't been to one in a long time. I always like to do videos there, as you probably remember. I used to do one every single weekend. There was Hannes Wagner. That was before the big card boom, and now... <laughs> Even at flea markets, cards are overpriced. Alec Bohm, rookie card. I'm still sleeping him, even though he's been pretty bad this year. Garrett Crochet, orange, is sleepable. And there's a Nolan Arenado right there. A nice picture on that card. It's going to be a pretty cool week coming up here with All-Star festivities, by the way. Monday is the big home run derby. Actually, I was thinking about maybe going out to uh, Colorado and sitting out in the, the seats, sitting 500 feet away from home plate and trying to catch a ball, but... Turns out that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go, uh, but it would have been fun. They are using baseballs that have not been in the humidor. So there's Charlie Blackman right there. So the balls are going to be traveling extra far this year. We've got a virtual reality insert card there of Trevor Bauer and Davy Garcia looking up there from the pen is the last one. And in our last pack, we've got a Ryan McMahon, J.D. Davis. Sonny Gray and Chris Bubich. That's a red foil. So, Thomas, you're not done just quite yet. You still have your future stars that we need to look at. Hopefully, there's going to be uh, your future star special set. Hopefully, there might be a rookie in here. I, I feel like last month, was it all older players? Let's see what we've got here. I mean, that's kind of cool for the younger fans out there. This is probably more geared towards kids. Although, you know, there's adults buying it, obviously, as it's sold out. Um, I can't get this opened. The other extra boxes we'll have. I do have a couple extra. Those are for my kiddos. All right. So, I don't know if I'm going to open this up three more times. but Because uh, they're all going to be the exact same set. But we've got Willie Mays with his 660 career home runs. Just turned 90 years old a few months ago. Tony Gwynn. Of course, both of these guys are Hall of Famers. Tony Gwynn probably would have been uh, a 400 hitter in 1994. Yogi Berra hit 394 in 1994. Does it show us the stats on the back? I wish that it did. Um, it doesn't really tell you too much on the back at all. It's I'll give you a fun fact about him. That's just about it. How about this fun fact? Over the course of his 20-year career, Tony only struck out 434 times in 9,288 bats. I mean, if you take two seasons of Joey Gallo, who's having a great year, all-star. Uh, by the way, I'm picking Joey Gallo to win the Home Run Derby, everybody. Uh, just officially throw that out there right now. Joey Gallo might strike out 434 times in two full seasons. There's Yogi Berra. That's a nice one, number eight from the Yankees. Looks like that one might, uh, that picture may have been taken at spring training. George Brett, who hit 390 in 1980. Nice picture on that card. And the big hurt, Frank Thomas. So that's the exclusive set. The cards are nice, have a nice glossy feel. You can probably see the light going off of them right there. So cool set there for the kiddos. So Thomas, thank you very much. And I hope that you're able to pass that along to, uh, you know, whatever kiddo may like those cards. You can tell them stories about each of them, every one of those players. All right, so we'll put your stuff back in the box. And now the rest of these three boxes are going to be the same. But we're still going to open up the blasters. And send off the goodies to the Patreon members that purchased them. So Cindy's up right now. Let's see what we can find for Cindy. Same deal as you see right there. There's the germ pen or the anti-germ pen. You got that special set which we just reviewed and took a look at. We're not going to go through that again. Um, it's just going to be the same five cards. It'd be cool if there was like autographs in there, but I, you know, I highly doubt it with, um, you know, the, the type of players on those cards. Of course, Tony Gwynn no longer with us, but the, the other guys, um, 
well, Yogi Berra either, but could maybe get a Frank Thomas auto. That would be pretty crazy. But anyway, I, I don't think there's any autographs. We're just gonna rip down through the rest of these. And uh, as we go, I'll just mention, did you check out the Throwback Thursday last night, the Mike Trout um, Throwback Thursday, the Jump the Box of 2011 Tops update? I swear my blood pressure may have gotten up into uh, just like dangerous levels where um, like, who knows, like 200 something over like 180. Man, I was so mad during that break. You're gonna have to watch the whole thing to see how it unfolded, but um, let's just say we were searching for the Carlos Beltron card all night. We finally found it. The Beltron card is typically the indicator for the Mike Trout card. And then um, just chaos ensued. I guess, um, you know, according to other people, the indicator cards aren't a foolproof way of finding a trout. Taiwan Walker having a great season with black foil. Aloy Jimenez, he's uh, hopefully going to be back soon. There's Dean Kramer. Got Max Muncy right there, red foil, screaming at the uh, dugout there. Probably just hit a dinger. There's Reese Hoskins, Andrew Benintendi in his Royals uniform. Got the Stadium Club greats, Clayton Kershaw there. That's his reprint rookie card. Willie Mays in the dugout. I'm guessing that was taken at an all-star game, by the way, because if you look closely, you can probably see, is that Tony Perez sitting there? And then down on the line, different color hats. Pretty awesome picture right there. Speaking of all-star festivities, can't wait for the all-star game. That's always one of my favorites. And uh, growing up, I always loved, probably more than the all-star game itself, I love the introductions when they call out all the reserves to stand on the line. And then they call out the starting lineup. And you get to see all these stars in one place in one game. It's just awesome. I love the uh, love the um, opening ceremonies there. Or the introductions. There's a Mike Trout. Of course, the All-Star game this year is at Coors Field in Colorado. There was rumblings that maybe it would come to Pittsburgh as um, it got moved out of Atlanta. Got to feel really bad for all the folks in Atlanta. A lot of people, you know, counting on the, the uh, All-Star game to bring in revenue and jobs and all that stuff. But it got moved. And now it's in Colorado. I won't talk too much more about all that stuff. But um, if it was in Atlanta, would I have been more likely to go? Probably. I've actually never been to Coors Field. I've been to 21 Major League Baseball stadiums, but I've never been to Coors Field. I've been to Atlanta a bunch of times, Turner Field, but not the new stadium there, so I would have liked to have gone down there. Here we go with our next box. I've still only been to one Major League Baseball game this year. That's crazy. By the way, this third box is for the Swan Sea. I hope I said that right. Athletic Booster Club. Let's see what we've got for you guys. We've got a pen for you guys. There's your exclusive set, and here's your blaster box. Let's rip the blaster open, and we'll see what we can find on this Friday. All righty, so inside we have the uh, box topper there. It's Bobby Dalbeck. Nice one right there. I'm trying to think, did we get a Bobby? Uh, did we get a, a box topper on that last one? We did not. So I put the box topper for the last box, by the way, was a Juan Soto. So we'll put that in Cindy's box. Sorry, Cindy. So I used to just grabbing the packs out of here and tossing them aside. I totally forgot about that. So there you go. That's a pretty good one. Juan Soto is going to be in the home run derby this year, if you hadn't uh, heard. And uh, Juan Soto is not a favorite right now. I think the odds have him as the second unlikeliest to win uh he overall he's ranked number eight i think in the they're doing like a bracket system this year so it looks like um soda who only had uh, 11 home runs when they made the brackets is going up against shohei otani who had i think 31 home runs at the time so shohei's number one soto's number eight that's a pretty good matchup between those two guys uh who are you taking are you taking soda for the upset i think soda's got a ton of power but i think i gotta go with otani over soto um, I don't think Otani's going to end up winning it. I haven't really looked closely at the bracket, so I don't know who Otani would have to go up against next if he does beat Soto. But um, I'll tell you what, I think that Gallo is going to put on a pretty good show. There's a key Brian Hayes. This is going to be a foil parallel. It is a black foil parallel. That's worth just a tad bit more. There's a Ryan Mountcastle. 
And I'm sleeving Mountie once again. If you hadn't seen in the breaks, get that one sleeved up. Superstar duo of Tatis. He's obviously not going to be in the home run derby. He's got that shoulder that's been a little bit iffy the past couple weeks. Wants to rest that up, which is understandable. I'll also be interested to see if um, Otani, by the way, suffers a home run slowdown. He, basically, he's on pace for like, I don't know what the number is, 55 home runs or something like that. Um, there's been times in the past where players have participated in the home run derby and they've lost their power the second half. Like their timing has gotten messed up. I think Todd Frazier was the uh, most prolific example or the biggest glaring example of that. So some players are a little wary of doing it. Does take a lot out of you. I feel like a line drive hitter that just focuses on hitting line drives. There's a photographer's proof card. We'll get that one sleeved up. I feel like Soto is a guy that's just going to hit a lot of line drives and not try to like just like swing from his heels. Um, I think he'll be okay. I don't think he's going to hit a ton of home runs in the Derby. But watch, I'll probably be totally wrong. Uh, in the 2019 home run Derby, which is the last one that happened, I picked Vladimir Guerrero Jr., um, he's, um, you know, always one of my favorites. I've been a big fan of his for the longest time. And of course, uh, Vladdy ended up putting on just an amazing show. There's Joey Gallo, by the way. He's my pick for the Home Run Derby this year. You might recall Vladdy Jr. going head to head against Jock Peterson in that epic round that had to go to overtime, just killing the ball. And that may have tired him out because. Uh, he ended up losing in the finals to Pete Alonso, and Pete is going to be back. Pete Alonso will be back this year, uh, year to defend his crown, as there was no home run derby last year. This is our last box, by the way. Hope everybody's having a good time watching this video. Thank you very much for watching the video. Really appreciate that. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, I hope you'll do so. Hope you'll join us tonight. Got that Saturday showdown tomorrow. Sunday's the world's greatest card chase, which I've got 20 boxes of those to open. So we just we just did the video with 20 boxes of uh, Absolute a couple days ago. And uh, you know what? It actually surprised me. It was better than I thought. Double the amount of autographs I was expecting in the, that, that 20 box lot of Absolute. But um, we'll see how 20 boxes of world's greatest card chase stacks. So maybe we'll find one of the card chase cards. I mean, I found them before. You might remember one of the all-time lows of my channel was opening maybe about 100 boxes of those and eventually finding the chase card. And it was a redemption card. And you know who it was for? It was for a Mark Grace 88 Fleer card, which is like a 10-cent card. Uh, there's a nice Hank Aaron. I Man, I don't know if we can find, the, uh, find that video because it was maybe two years ago. But uh, it's on it's somewhere back in the... Uh, in the uh, history, I guess just type in Jabs from the World's Greatest Car Chase, it would probably come up because I haven't done too many videos on that product. But talk about a kick in the butt. Mark Grace, I, I thought we were finding like a mantle, or I think there was like a Steve Carlton on the box, Willie Mays, Jackie Robinson, find this redemption. It's for a Mark Grace rookie card from 88 Flair. Like, are you kidding me? That, that's a classic moment. Let's hope we can find something good here for Craig in our final box of the video. Stadium Club Blasters. Personally, I think if you love Stadium Club, which a lot of you do love Stadium Club. Heck, I love Stadium Club. But I don't love the Blasters that much just because they don't really offer you as much value. Now, I mean, you get – they're mostly base-centric. I mean, why not just – like I've said this a bunch of times, if you haven't heard it already, go buy yourself a hobby box for one twenty, one thirty dollars. If you love Stadium Club that much, get yourself two guaranteed autographs and a bunch of base cards. Um, you would have to buy, like I said, a whole case of Stadium Club blasters just to get two autos. There's Chipper Jones, and a case of these costs about twelve hundred dollars on Still City Collectibles. That's before tax and shipping. Shohei Otani right there, who I think is going to have a nice showing in the home run derby. Don't think he's going to win it, though. I don't think he's going to be wanting to swing all out. He might hold back just a little bit. A lot of guys uh, that are in home run derby, their approaches are just, you know, go out there and have a good batting practice. If you hit home runs, you do. If you don't, you don't. But they're not going to mess up their swings for it. There's a Jacoby Jones with the uh, I Love You Mom eye black, probably worn on Mother's Day. Nice orange parallel. Dansby Swanson. 
Needs to get that average up a little bit. Last time I checked, he was sitting about 226. Garrett Cole needs to figure something out right there. Look at those stats. Garrett Cole with an 096 whip. By the way, whip, if you're new to baseball, that's walks plus hits per innings pitch. So anything under one is like really, really good. He got a 0 0.96 right there. Um, man, he's just been really bad the last few starts. And a lot of people think that it's because he's not allowed to have sticky tack anymore, or spider tack. Uh, his buddy, Aroldis Chapman, also of the Yankees, has been just absolutely abysmal. In fact, he's actually lost his uh, closer's job for the time being. I think, I think Chad Green's closing games now. Um, Aroldis Chapman's last seven games, looked at his stats, 1688 earned run average. And this was like the first two months of the season. The guy had like a zero-something earned run average. He's just, I don't know, something. Um, some of these pitchers got to learn to adjust without using what they were using. There's Lou Gehrig. Love that card, the Iron Horse. And our final card of the video is going to be a Denelson Lamette. And that's all we've got for the Future Star Club for today. I hope you'll check us out later on tonight. No face-off Friday today on Friday. We'll save that. I was thinking about maybe doing Absolute, but uh, I decided not to. Um, with the um, live stream with Top's Future Stars coming in today, I figured we would check these out. Tomorrow we've got the Saturday showdown for you. We've also got that Sunday review of the world's greatest card chase. Monday's Mystery Box Monday. Tuesday, we're going to a couple card stores this weekend. Um, so maybe we'll bring you something uh, from the card stores on Tuesday. I don't know. Maybe I'll make an, all an all-star game themed video too. That's something that's kind of floating in my head. We'll see what we come up with. So lots of stuff. I hope you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Tap that little bell. Turns on all of your notifications. So whenever we do post a video, you get a notification in the YouTube app and don't miss a thing. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday. Hope you can check us out on our live stream later, and I'll see you all later. Good night, everybody.